spinner machine. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I keep going back to the Skinner machine? Well, it's because it works so well for Skinner, but can we make it work for us? Yes. There is one peculiar thing about the Skinner machine I'll mention. It uses a tall weight like this, and he only mounts it, secures it, fastens it on the bottom. He doesn't put any brace. Now, I think that if a brace would help, he would have put a brace. But there's probably something about how it works that it doesn't work right or quite as well with a brace. So. The short version of this is oscillations in, rotations out. So this goes back and forth like this. So we're able to harness the power of centrifugal force and gravity together. That's our energy source. But there's an issue. This as it falls, it increases in speed, so it goes bang, bang. So you say, well, I'll just put like a linkage and rod, something like this, but still, if it doesn't slow down, it'll go boing, boing. So it has to have this sine wave motion. So what has a perfect sine wave motion? A pendulum. So we'll put a pendulum on top. Problem solved. So on the top we have something kind of going like this. Now it's just mounted in the middle. And I don't think that really matters where it's mounted. I'm just getting, you know, where it's mounted. Uh, well, he has a longer rod, but this is just a demonstration. So this goes like this. And you can tell with Skinner's machine, the weights are like this when it slows down. But as it speeds up, they're going like this. Okay? And it's important that you do not have a gimbal. You just want... Something so it goes like this. Rocks. You want a rocker. That's what I mean. So you can, well, you can make it. You can make something on bearings, and it can be any size. Now, of course, I need to cut most of this off, but rocker like this, or you can just use like half-inch rod, put some oil on it. Okay. Well, a bolt. And I can prove that the input is loosely coupled by going through the frames of the video. So the input is rotation, and it's driving some sort of crank. Now, we don't know 100% everything that's going on, but you can tell it's loosely coupled, like this. So this, this crank okay, is just moving this back and forth. And this, here is loosely coupled to the bottom. So it's really that simple. So, I know what you're thinking. Why hadn't I built it? Well, I hadn't done got around to it. But I actually have built similar things to what I'm talking about in the past. I have a video of one. So, well, I guess I just really didn't understand it. Uh, everything was moving, but it didn't seem like anything was happening. Maybe I expected kapows and 
cracks and bangs to happen. But it's very similar to this. But the one mistake that I did was I just hung a rotor on here this way. Now with scanners, they're stacked way up. And there's no brace. So there's a guy in Italy did a very good job, but he didn't do it how David Query said to do it. That was his mistake. But you could modify it to make it work right. He put a brace here between the top of this and this. I'm pretty sure he did. And, you know, Skinner was no dummy. He would have put a brace on it if it still worked with the, if the, when there was a brace on it. So I kind of have this idea that maybe it's like perpetually kind of falling in a circle. So there's multiple things going on with the Skinner machine. And, uh, yeah, I plan on building it. I think it'll work with just one, and then you could scale it up. Uh, Skinner got a lot of power out. Um, one problem I tried was I would always try to connect the output to the input to loop it, and it doesn't work. You gotta be smarter than that. It's easier to use magnet motors and uh, permanent magnet generators. And the other problem is, is that this can get unsynchronized because it's gotta be loosely coupled, remember? So really you just want just the right amount of input to keep it all running at the same speed. And the weird thing about this is that it doesn't seem to speed up very much. It kind of wants to run, you know, 60 RPM, like Skinner said. So it's that simple. People have made some really good models, but they spin this, and they have this gimbal, which, you know, it kind of looks like it could be a gimbal, but I don't think so. They're rocking back and forth. And the giveaway is that if you experiment with stuff that's loosely coupled like this, the motion is a little bit different. So you can learn to recognize loosely coupled, excuse me, loosely, cu loosely coupled gravity motor motion. 